you know you only got but a certain amount of time and they didn't give me no they didn't give me no countdown so it just it just ended on its own yeah i say i say the last one i'm waiting on uh i'm waiting on kendra to come back I appreciate y'all being here, engaging in this in real time. It's very important. Do you think y'all would still be there if he, had he not went to jail? Probably. Oh, no sound. Oh. Is it really no sound? Is it is it no sound? Or is that other people's phones? Oh, so clearly some people can hear me. Okay, good. All right. I'm waiting on Kendra to come back. Okay, I just wanted to make sure. Y'all questions are very important because they pretty much kick off. Oh, there you go, babe. I see you. Boom. Are uh, you back? Hey, yeah, I'm here. I'm gonna put. I'm gonna mute myself though, real quick. Okay. All right. All right that's fine. Okay. Uh, y'all's questions are very helpful to those of you who are actually empathizing with the situation. Um, I know a lot of people have different perspectives. Some people view it as, you know, another episode of Love and Hip Hop. Some people, you know, view it as entertainment. Some people use it as an opportunity to, you know, express their own hurt onto somebody who they feel like uh, maybe deserves it. But, but it's okay. How do you feel releasing all this? Do you think, appreciate that, Bells. Do you think him going to jail opened your, your red? I don't, I, you probably made a typo. Um, or open my eyes. Yeah, definitely. Like I tell people all the time, him going to jail prevented him from having a constant state of influence on our days. And that restriction, it forced force you to insert your own pattern of thinking into those gaps where his process of thinking were formerly present. So that time where he was unable to call and speak, I actually finally had a real chance to sit with myself and I began to examine things that I necessarily didn't have time to examine and come to conclusions on my own accord. And I realized, wow, I have the ability to use logic and reason. And, and over time, I slowly began to develop that logic and reasoning back, ultimately being able to make the decision to leave altogether. What you said? What do you think about how people used to say they calling kids on y'all? Uh, you meant, you must you must meant to say cops. If that's what you if that's what you meant to say, cops instead of kids, I think everybody was right. Whoever called the police, I think he was right. I know you was right because I was there. Everybody that called CPS, you was right to do that. Everybody that made videos, everybody that so called trolled. Everything you did, if you if you were trying to make the cult look bad, you did the right thing because we were bad. If you were calling the local authorities or CPS, you did the right thing because those people needed to be called. It's all 
Good. I know some people may not they they may not have heard us address a lot of these questions, but it's okay. And, and I know that seeing and Ja there, like even like now that I see Ja in the state that he's in, I'll be like, man, I can't believe I even had him there. And I'm glad, and I and I I give myself a little grace because I got him out. I I got him out. You know, I got him out. And I and I really really understand like people on the outside looking in like what is that little baby doing there what is this little baby doing around all this ignorance do you think the wise will ever leave yeah i just understand that and i just got uh access to this information from watching survivor r kelly from one of the clinical psychologists is that it on average takes a survival or a victim seven times to leave an abusive relationship. So I think that over time, as those women build up their courage, because they're only going to let you see certain things online, but behind the scenes, they're building, they're, they're questioning their reality because that doesn't go away. They're trying to build up their courage to do what they know they need to do but it takes some time and it takes several attempts. But one of the things that I've seen from watching the cult documentary is that cults, cult members inevitably leave. They will eventually leave. They will eventually leave. And I had this thought, I was like, I wonder what John, go I don't wonder how he gonna feel when he's like 16, 17, 18, looking like, yo, John, you was there too. Like, look at you. <laughs> He might not, he probably ain't gonna remember none of it, but it's gonna be like, yo, you was there, man. You was, yeah, you was there. Like it, it's, I look at our story and it's, it's, it's a, it's a very interesting story to share. Like he has some of the most unique parents in the world. Like you don't, your mom and like our story, you, you usually hear your mom and daddy's story. Yeah, we met at church or we went to school together, but you rarely find people that can say, yo, me and your mama met in a cult. Oh, the cult documentary you need to watch is called Explained on Netflix. Explained is a series, but the episode is called Cults. Keep, keep Sweet, Pray, and Obey is also on Netflix. Um, And watch uh, Survivor R. Kelly. Ra is actually in here. So, I I... I I allow people to speak for themselves. And if I do make a statement on somebody, I always uh, uh, I always make it clear that I'm making an assumption or I'm speculating. But if you have a question for Ra, she's in here. How do... I said, how do your parents feel about the situation? Well, my mother, my mother died when I was 15. And my father and my family in general, I think they're just glad that I'm back. They don't, you know, try to probe or or anything like that. The only thing my grandmother asked me uh when I was watching the cult documentary, she just wanted to know, are you thinking about going back? And I noticed that my grandmother always asked me, where am I going? Because I know in the back of her mind, you know, there's still this lingering possibility that I could go back, you know, but I always let her know where I'm going and I always, you know what I'm saying, communicate where I'm going and all that stuff like that because I know and I have to accept and face that I caused damage to my, my family. And I only recently came back at the end of September. So the process is still going. You know, the process is still going. But, um, yeah, hey, I, I think I just think my family's glad that I'm back. And it's really hard to understand what I was doing because I'm still in the process of understanding what I'm doing. So I think that my family kind of leaves it alone and they just are just, just in the moment that, that I'm actually back and they can see that I'm back, back. Like, I'm not back to pick up no mail. I'm not back to, uh, you know, wait for him to get out of jail they can tell i'm really really back and so i think that's where that's where we're at you know
Will they express things later on when they feel appropriate, maybe? Is this y'all first time leaving the cult? Yeah, me, me and Kendra were known as, you know, the people that never left. And y'all, be, they've been here the longest, you know what I'm saying? That, that when we left, we left, we left. Like we knew when we, because we were so into it, when we left, we knew we was gone. It, we, 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 I'm not the type of person that's going to play back and forth. If I'm doing something, I'm doing it. If I'm not doing it, I'm not doing it. So once I left, I knew I was gone for good. I'm not playing. I'm not doing this. Ain't no test run. None of that. When I was done, I was done. And I had a real solid reason on why I was done. And it wasn't based than anything the cult leader has said, but it was based in my own internal compass that I had denied for a number of years and potentially my uh, the course of my life. What would you say broke the spell? I would say that him going to jail allowed me to examine things that I never had time to examine because we were constantly being stimulated with teachings, um, doing standing on the wall, setting up scenes, doing just different things. One of the uh, primary factors of a cult leader uh, and, and their success is keeping the cult members busy. So we was always busy. When I was driving here, driving there, booking flights, booking hotels, uh, going grocery shopping, da -da 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 -da, teaching, doing something. I was constantly busy. But when he went to jail, he couldn't keep me busy no more. So I had to fill in that space with me. And filling that space in with me allowed me to regain my trust in me. That's the reason why cult members stay is because they've lost their trust in themselves and have placed it upon the cult leader to make their decision. I started trusting myself again and I was like, boom, this is what's really going on. I don't care what the cult leader trying to say. I don't care what kind of picture he trying to paint. This is what's really going on. Oh, definitely, Vanilla. It's amazing that I, in, in the cult leader's mind, I stole my own money. Narcissistic people will do anything for their own self-interest because of a lack of ability to see things from other people's understanding and to be able to relate to people. They're, 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 the cult leader is pathetic. Did I subscribe to astrology prior to carbonation? No. I haven't seen Loyal since the day he left. Do the authorities have the hard drives that Loyal took? I don't know if he turned them in. I don't know, but they don't need them. They have everything they need. Like I posted something on my story. Um, a lot of people have opinions, but very few people have a law degree. Tabitha Pasmino, who is the defense, not the defense attorney, excuse me. She's the prosecutor for this case. Y'all should check out her resume. You should check out her resume. I think, I think that's a part of being a narcissist is that you're unaware of your own behaviors. From my understanding, the only thing that was on the hard drives was his videos that he had put on YouTube as a backup. We were just backing up the videos from YouTube just in case they took the channel down. Was he nicer to y'all when his son would visit? He would always change his behavior contingent upon who was present. For whatever outcome he wanted to produce. Yeah, of course. Social media lawyers think they know more than professionals, of course. Tabitha Pasmino. I put I I I, I, I just go to my just go to my uh just go to my um 
my story. Did the men ever get hit? I think Courtney got slapped. I know Pice got slapped. I got slapped. Juju got slapped. Loyal got slapped. Will you testify? At first, there was still cult residuals present because I, I, I was so disgusted at myself for being a part of the cult. I didn't even, I didn't, I wasn't even sure if I was even going to get on line again, let alone testify. But looking back at, just looking at surviving R. Kelly and other people having to have that courage to speak out against their abuser, I, I will testify if necessary. They might not need me to. Because when it comes to an indictment, from my understanding, I could be wrong. I'm not, I'm, I'm not a criminal justice major. I'm not a lawyer. I don't have no problem making it known that I may not know what I'm talking about. From what I understand about an indictment, when people are indicted, it is often accompanied by the prosecution having the evidence that they feel like is enough to lead to a conviction. And when you look at Tabitha Pasmino's resume she's already convicted two other sexual offenders to life in prison she's as i think she's a senior assistant to the da so she's not a regular she's not a public defender she's a real deal lawyer that has already been in these cases before she's not just testing the waters she's already convicted two people of similar offenses to life. This is not a game. And just because you file a motion for bond does not mean it has to be granted. And even if you do get the bond, the judge can set it so high that it's almost impossible for you to even raise the money. The state of Georgia would look very bad releasing someone to the general public who has so much recorded evidence against their own self. It would just look bad. I think it would be a failure on the justice system's behalf to release somebody who has been denied on three previous attempts and no, and the circumstances have not changed at all. And the funny part about it, exactly, Phenom Woman, the cult members that are there are so dumbfounded that they don't understand that this is bigger. This They didn't just start paying attention to his behavior. Janae going forth to the authorities was the door opening, the opening of the door that they needed. He's definitely a fight risk. <laughs> He's definitely a flight risk. He's definitely liable to contact the witness. It's recorded on a phone call when he instructed Courtney to contact Janae. And the state only has to prove and only has to demonstrate one, one. They don't even have to meet all four criteria. The state only has to demonstrate one. And if one of those demonstrations are, 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 are met, the judge can deny the bond. And I, and I, I don't expect nothing different from the cult leader because I watched R. Kelly deny. I watched R. Kelly sit up there and deny everything. Like he had no idea what happened. Even to the extent that he was even willing to blame his own brother. And I talked. That documentary was good, wasn't it? Man, man, I said, I fell asleep. 
my, I, I fell asleep on episode six. Fell asleep. And I had to go back to like, because you know how it'll keep going. So I had to go back to ep halfway between episode five and I finished it all the way through episode six. Mm -hmm. I woke up just so me and you could be caught up on the same page. I'm right. like, just the same way I felt about the FLDS. And yeah. I was like, how did I, yep. how did I overlook this? Why, how mm -hmm. did I miss that this was going on? How did I, how did I miss that R. Kelly was doing all this stuff? Well, it's crazy, right? Because even the co-leader was saying like, um, he was he was planting a, a seed of a narrative of R. Kelly in our head and why these women were coming out and saying what they were saying. And just like the other people believed, oh, it was for money. Oh, they was trying to get clout. Nah, bro. When I heard them intricate stories, I said, nah, they ain't lying. Nah, I'm lying. Because I experienced some of the same nah. things. <laughs> they ain't lying. I'm and like, I seen nah, the spirit. Okay. I seen the spirit of him uh, in R. Kelly for sure. For sure. That's crazy. And I'm looking at some of the pictures of R. Kelly. I'm like, bro, y'all look just alike. Yeah. And I'm not I'm not talking about physical features. Right. I'm just saying in y'all eyes, deeper. it's like y'all got the same spirit. I'm like, man, yeah. I understand finally why people was making the comparison between him mm -hmm. and R. Kelly. Yeah. It's like we didn't want to see that. I didn't even want to see R. Kelly as a bad like a bad figure right. in my mind. Because actually, that was the music. He used to play R. Kelly all the time. All the time. That was the song. He played that R. Kelly song when he broke my virginity. Like, it's just deep. And I just, it's like, I'm so disgusted. And I got so angry watching that documentary. I was like, oh, no. I'm not going to stop speaking about this because people like this just can't get away with, oh, I'm the victim and these people are trying to... um you know, throw salt on my name. Nah, bro. That's not what it is it's at no. all. At all. That is not that is not the motive. And I can't see the comments, so if there's any questions, just let me know. Oh, what happened? What the you heck is in my bread? Sorry. Um, I can't see the comments. Like, they're not rolling. Oh, damn. Okay, yeah, that if they if I uh if any questions pop up, I'll let you know. All right. Somebody said, can you talk about when he got everyone to shame you for missing job when you moved to ATL? So, um, yeah, um, well. Did everybody shame me? Um, it was like an unspoken thing. Uh, like I you wasn't supposed to feel, huh? I think I think she's talking about an actual incident. I think she's talking Wait, are you about that time when I was live and I cried on the live about loving and missing Ja. I think so. But y'all was in Philly. Y'all was in right. Philly. Yeah. It was in Atlanta. Um crazy because I didn't think I had done anything wrong with expressing my feelings um you know he would always say keep it real keep it 100 be transparent be vulnerable so I thought you know I'm being recorded on this camera I want to be honest with the way I feel as much as I can be based off what I you know can feel um and so I thought I was being pretty honest at that time but then I also would quickly like be like, but I need to be here to serve him and I need to make sure that he's the forefront of my mind, you know. But um, he, what I did notice, and I always knew this, um, was that he was right there in the room with Tanisha and Porsche when they were, um, they were instructed to ask me those questions that they were asking me 100%. Tanisha would never ask me those questions. Um, hold on. Uh. Okay, yeah, a hundred percent they were 
instructed exactly what to ask me behind like he was sitting behind the camera and they were in front of the camera and so even at that time I knew that those questions weren't coming from them um but I so I can't even really you know he would just use us like that like they weren't necessarily genuinely asking me questions um or trying to shame me but he was doing all that um to basically just create this narrative that I was doing what I wanted to do um, to the public. Like, oh, I wanted to be with there with him and not with my child. When in fact, it was just like, I was under so much mental control that I viewed nothing more important than being in his, in his presence. Because I thought, what I thought was my attachment to my child could mean that I'm not going to make it to heaven because in his teachings you can't have any attachments to anything but him because he describes himself as this not really a human but like a god you know so if you have an attachment to him that's fine but you can't have an attachment to any other human or any possession um and you you have to view your children as these like attachments um that you don't have possession over you know and you have to be able to let them go at any time so a lot of times I already kind of played with the idea in my head that I wasn't going to be able to be a mother to my child you know I just even though it was hard I was literally crying I was trying so hard to be strong but um you know I it took everything in me and I think that a lot of a lot of time um, that when Ja was with his father, it I was distracted so much by what was going on with him and the other women around me that it was like Ja was out of out of sight and he was out of mind because what was going on right in front of me was like it was constant chaos. You know, for example, we would just be having a regular night you know, about to, about to go to sleep, you know, and next thing you know, Tanisha had said something or did something that he feels is disrespectful. So now we're in a meeting for hours about whether or not she's a disrespectful, you know, person and she's a bitch, oh, disrespectful woman that is, you know, weaponized, you know, being used as a weapon against him by white supremacy, you know, we're going deep into that. And sometimes it would turn into a live video, and we would have to sit there and listen to him. So I wasn't really able to like fully process or anybody wasn't really able to fully process the fact that my child was there, but wasn't there. Because we were so absorbed with him, you know, and every day it was like, you guys come and take care of me. And he, he, he looked, basically what he did was he painted this image that Ja was actually Aaron. And that's why oh we had to goodness. call Ja Ja. Oh my goodness. We had to call Ja True. And um, so everybody was kind of struggling with that because everybody knew Ja's Ja. Uh, we were told we had to call Ja true because he, Ja means God and we can't call anybody else God but him. And Ja is actually his father's spirit. So we need to start looking at him like his father and not look at him like a child or a baby. So I and please had a hard about, time with that. Please, please talk about how that shifted the women's yeah. behavior towards Ja. Yeah. How, talk about how yeah. it was and then talk about how it shifted. So initially, I actually still have the pictures of, you know, all the women, you know, holding Ja at some point. Um, you know, Ra, she was really close with Josh. You know, um, Kayla, really close with Ja. Um, she used to feed him, like, you know fruit and stuff when he was a baby like I have pictures of her holding him um there's uh Tanisha even told me that she felt like Ja reminded her so much of her son um so she had an attachment to him actually the reason why we all started calling him Ja Ja was because of Tanisha Tanisha started calling him Ja Ja 
So we all pick up that nickname and call him Jaja. So every single person had, a, every single woman had a relationship with Ja and it was real. You know, you could tell it was real because, you know, he's a child, he's pure and he didn't mind, you know, being held by any of them. He even, um, when he got to the point where he could walk and stuff, he would gravitate towards them and um, want to show them his toys and, you know, just talk to them, interact with him like children do. And they were, at that point, they would respond back to him with love. Um, and then there was a point, there was multiple points. Um, because at one point, Velvet was even, there's a picture of Velvet I just seen, it was on the news of her holding job, but they have the baby's face blurred out and people think it's princess or or not princess, sorry, but, um, you know, her child, uh, the little girl, um, his, him and her child, they think it's her child that she's holding in the picture, but it's actually Ja. So, like, everybody had a really good relationship with Ja, but over time, I think he noticed that people loved Ja. Like, even he posted Ja on his page because Ja is just a beautiful human. Like, he's a beautiful baby. He's gorgeous and he's so pure and he just had this, he has these beautiful eyes and it was just hard for people not to love him. Like everybody loved Ja. And then he, when he started preaching, um, I think it was about like when we were starting, when we was traveling towards Mexico again and he started preaching that this whole bloodline thing about how his children were royalty and everybody else's children were kind of like the servant of royalty and he was saying that he wanted to keep reproducing himself with his multiple wives and then his wives would then go on to make their children together with the other wives children like basically their sister wives and he would say like basically half brother and half sister would mate with each other and so that he can keep going with his bloodline he's an idiot because he doesn't know that causes genetic defects and he tried to explain that away because they don't have the same mother but that doesn't matter um eventually the the people will have defects but we didn't consider that at that time and he definitely wasn't talking about that he was only talking about how he wanted to basically just create more of himself so um he basically was saying that he would never mate his children with our children for example or like solar's child or Musa's child you know nobody else's child would be allowed to mate with his child because his child was going to be royalty which was fine I didn't have an issue with that because he would say things like your child would be more fit to mate with Solar's child or Musa's child and I agreed with that you know at that time because I'm like yeah that makes sense because if they like you, you know, like, it makes sense. But um, especially because we had already came into our mind that we were, like, going to be a community of people or a nation of people. So it was like there wasn't going to be any outsiders. Um, so I just agreed to that. And then um, I didn't really dig deep in the whole line breeding thing. But over time, he started preaching this whole, the, the children belong to the father. And I think that there was some women that wanted to come and join that also had children and he wanted to encourage them to leave their children. You know, he did this on live with seven and stuff like that. He wanted, he wanted the women that were wanting to be with him, but had children to basically be convinced that their children belonged with their father and not with the mother and so that he can then take them and mate with them and have more children. Um, so he would say things like, you don't want to have a child by, you don't want to keep having children by those men. You want to have my baby. You should come here, be with me. Leave those children and come have my baby. He told me to say on live that I gave Aaron one child and now that I will give him one child. A lot of people were confused thinking I was pregnant at the time. When I said that, I wasn't. He was making me speak that into existence. Like, you know, I'm not going to, I'm not going to keep bearing children with Aaron I'm gonna now have children with him um he wanted me to say that from my mouth so that people thought I wanted to do what I was doing and um so yeah the women started treating Ja differently from that point because he, they were ordered to you know directly and indirectly 
you know that he would say things like that's true y'all know that's true right that's not a baby that's true you know and so they would they would start to question how they felt about Ja and then it started to get a little disrespectful I felt um we were in Philadelphia and Kayla um Ja was coming into the kitchen to ask me something and Kayla told him to get out the kitchen and she did this little like finger thing on his forehead like if you were to push somebody's forehead with your finger like back up and I told her I said don't ever do that to my child I said I, and, and I, I was so serious with her she sat down I remember her sit down she felt my energy I was like don't ever do that to my child I was like I don't know what you got going on in yourself but that's a child right there. I said, now, how would you feel if I came up to you and plucked your forehead and told you to back up? Yeah, that would be a fight, right? But because he's powerless, because he's a child, you think that that's right. And I told her that's not right. And, and Zoka was right there. Jayon was right there. She could tell you I told her that. And, and Jayon said, yeah, I agree with I agree with Sheba on this one. You know, she agreed with me on that. And I was like, yeah, because you're not going to sit here and, and talk to him like that. I said, now, and I said, now, and I know you're twisted. I know you got it twisted because just two days ago you was with Caliber and you didn't treat Ja like that. But since now you switched up and you with the, the other dude, you know, the cult leader now, now you treating Ja like that. I peeped it. And I told her, I said, and that's not right. I said, treat him the same way you always treated him because that that's not okay okay for you to just switch up now because you with the cult leader when two days ago when you was with caliber he was oh ja ja i love ja and smiling and hugging on him i said that's not right you know and and that's when i started to see the little evil spirit in her um and i told her about herself and i told her i said i don't really like you like that i said i don't after that like i really see you and i don't like you like that because you did that to my child you know and you did that to a child you know what i'm saying because you're because you're an adult you can do and treat a child like how you want to treat a child no you know like i started realizing that these people have real issues in themselves just like i did you know and we we weren't healing generational curses we were creating them you know or or repeating them and then i started to notice when we got back to elena and Ja was with me um the women they would be getting dressed in in the room with with the co-leader in the co-leader's room and you know jaw's wandering around the house he's walking around and he doesn't feel like he's not welcome in any room so he walks into the room and see i guess they are getting dressed and i mean the door is open you know that's why jaw walked in and and uh they start covering up and say oh my gosh this is jaw you know and i and i was like why are y'all responding like that and come to find out it was because he was telling them that that's actually true and when he when jaw came around they should treat him like that's true so walking in the room and they shouldn't you know so they didn't want to let troop see let them you know let the baby see them naked because oh my gosh and that's fine of course you know you you shouldn't be naked around the baby or whatever but they were treating it like it wasn't a baby and i felt like you're absolutely ridiculous like and so we had a meeting about it where you know it was the weirdest meeting because the cult leader was in the bath with tanisha while we were in this meeting and i was sitting <clears throat> i was sitting outside of the bath with the other women and he's like you felt some type of way about that huh and i said yes because we're treating we, we we preach that children are pure and that we shouldn't be tainting their minds you know but here we are you know, treating this little baby, here you guys are treating this little baby as if he's a grown person when we're supposed to be keeping the innocence of children. This is not right. And he was like, well, I think that you feel like that because you feel like he is not all true spirit. You feel like he is your spirit too. And I said, yes, I do. So in that moment, he realized that I didn't really believe in his teachings as far as the, the, child just is the father's i believe that ja was a part of me as well so i think he was trying to kind of break my relationship with ja with his teachings um as well as the other women's relationship with their children with his teachings um but it just wasn't working with me because i was the only woman there that had, had their child physically there so it hit a little different for me you know, it was a little bit more personal for me because I was there with my child while, you know, Tanisha, her child is back with somebody else. She doesn't see her child, talk to her child, so she's not thinking about him. 
Porsche, her child is gone with somebody else. She's not thinking about or talking to her child. Kayla, she had an, uh, an abortion and a miscarriage. So she's not thinking about those children. They were never in her arms. Twice. Twice. Um, it, what is her name? Jayon, a.k.a. Zoka. She had a stillbirth baby. So she was never able to form a genuine connection with her child alive. So they don't have the same relation to their children that I had to my child. So it was very hard for them to relate. They're young women. I do not blame them. They're very young, naive. They don't realize that this person has taken so much control over their lives that their very belief system is just his. It's not their own. So it's like, I can't blame them for, you know, shaming me for being a mother the way that I was and them telling me, you're too nice, you're too mothering, you're too nurturing, you give him everything you, he wants, you don't say no to him, you, uh, you know, I, you, you're going to, you're going to make him weak, you're going to make him fragile, you're, you're not teaching him to be strong, you're teaching him to rely on you and, you know, they just couldn't fathom why I was just giving Josh so much attention and care and and love because they were taught not to give their own children that much love and attention and care and they were taught to disregard their feelings about all of their children every last one of them the dead and the ones alive they were told that they were not supposed to have feelings about that or that any feelings that they had about that were supposed to be you know um carefully debunked with the knowledge so that they didn't have to feel those feelings for real. But we all know, well, we all don't, maybe not. We may, we may all not know, but I know personally that Kayla hurts because she wanted children very badly. Um, and now who knows if she's going to be able to have children again. When you have an abortion, you know, and when you, when you have a miscarriage, it's kind of scary. You know, there's trauma there. So she wanted children. She talked all the time about having a little girl and that never happened for her. And twice it was supposed to. Um, the first time in Panama when she was with Caliber and she got pregnant and he told her, you're not supposed to be with him, you're supposed to be with me. And so she decided in her mind she was going to be with the cult leader if she had a miscarriage. <laughs> it was crazy because shortly after she had, she was on the, she was outside and she I guess she felt pain. She got on the toilet. I saw it. She had a miscarriage. And she said, I guess this is a sign that I should be with the co-leader. And I, me being as silly as I was at the time, told her she was right. And she's lucky that that happened. It's just being so brainwashed. I told her that. And, um, you know, and funny, <laughs> she ended up going back to Caliber shortly after getting pregnant again. And then he took them all to California and she came back and told me a very deep, dark secret. She said, I took a pill and I, I aborted the baby. Um, I didn't know I wasn't there. I didn't see her take it, but that's what she told me. And Kayla always trusted me. Um, Jayon wanted to be what was she was so reluctant to be excited about her own pregnancy none of us were excited for her except Janae nobody wanted her to be pregnant because we saw we knew that how that would affect everything the co-leader didn't even want her and Solar to be together from the beginning so we knew that that, that was going to be negative because we had already demonized their relationship in our mind. So when she got pregnant, nobody celebrated, nobody clapped. She was alone. That whole pregnancy, just like in my whole pregnancy, she was alone. And she was shamed. And she didn't want the baby. I, I, I believe she didn't want it. Um, the baby grew and grew and grew. By the time 
he had she was she was about five or six months and he was convincing her to drink by uh was it tequila shots she was very reluctant to take those shots and he told her you're not supposed to have no fear you're not supposed to have no fear and made her take the shots and and shortly after that he took all the women back like i was talking about earlier there was seven of us in one house in mexico and he made sure to have sex with her six months pregnant and i guess she had found a way i think she was six months pregnant she was definitely showing a lot um she had never been to a hospital though to get a checkup or anything so we really don't know the health of the baby while this was all happening after those tequila shots nothing she was never she was never 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 at a doctor appointment ever none of us were um while pregnant she I remember I remember her coming to me and telling me she found a video of there's a way to abort a baby um, when the baby is, you know, even big, like even the amount of months that she was at, there was a way to abort the baby. So she came and showed me a video of how they do it. And it was a very graphic video. And she said, this is what I want to do. I want to abort this baby. The baby was kicking everything. She wanted to abort the baby. And um, she somehow got a ticket. And she got in the car to go abort the baby one morning. And she was going to go fly back to California, basically. That's where she got a ticket to. She was going to go fly back to California and get the baby aborted. Nobody knew about this. I don't think it was said online or out loud. I don't know. Because I didn't watch every video or anything. I just know that this is what she told me. This is what I remember. And um, I just remember she she came back, you know, like that, that same day. She's like, I couldn't do it. She's like, I just got this feeling that it was like I was doing something wrong. And I couldn't do it. And so she. She never got on the flight. She never went to California. She never got an abortion. She just stayed. And she got back with Solar. And she seemed to be doing better. But her skin was still really bad. Bad eczema. Just her body wasn't looking good. Her face wasn't looking good. Bad in her eyes. She wasn't the same girl. And I didn't realize this. But I watched a video yesterday where... She even said that she got pregnant three months into her being there. I believe that Jayon would have left if she didn't get pregnant. She got pregnant three months into being there. What was she supposed to do? Get on a flight and go back to her family pregnant? She was embarrassed, you know? This was a girl that only had one other sexual encounter in her life. You know, we were a lot of like, we didn't give ourselves away like that. So getting pregnant three months into being there, she was shocked into staying, you know? Um, she was trapped and went through with the whole pregnancy after, you know, even being forced into, I don't even know if this was before or after, but she was, she did have a threesome with her and Solar and the cult leader. And she was forced to do that because the co-leader basically said to her in some type of way or form that, oh, you want to be with two men, right? Well, here's your chance. And she told me she didn't like it at all. Later on, and the reason why her tooth was not present towards, you know, that stay, uh, the end of that stay in Puerto Rico. Hold on, my baby. Man, some of this stuff I'm just not hearing. I don't know if I'm doing a good job on my face because I learned how to do it in the military. I don't know if I'm doing a good job holding myself together as far as my facial expressions is concerned. But on the inside, I'm it's, it's something else. And I understand what people say 
when they say when they talk when they refer to an emotional situation and they say this is a lot this is a lot and just when you think you've gotten yourself back together it's something else i was there and i'm just now finding out about this that's why i encourage everybody that was involved to please find it in yourself to tell your story because you have pieces that other people don't have that could be very vital to their healing process i know you might be afraid of what people gonna think but that's okay Because there's certain stuff the women seen that the guys didn't see. There's certain things that the guys seen that the women didn't see. There's certain things that each person seen that other people didn't see. So to get a real complete picture of what we was doing and who we was dealing with, we need all of them pieces. I'm not rushing you. I'm not forcing you to do nothing. But when you feel ready, Anybody who was there, please continue to speak out so that not only we can heal, but other people who have connected themselves to our story can heal as well. And so that we can also inspire other people in similar situations to heal in the same way. Because I'm listening to this story and I'm like, It's crazy, right? Um, yeah, I, I really, the reason why I'm saying this stuff too is because I know that she probably doesn't remember this stuff <laughs> because I barely, um, like it, things like some certain things are coming back to me. Like thinking about her story, I'm going back into every encounter that I had with her and I'm just like, I was so absorbed in things I had going on that I didn't take the time to think this young girl that came here at 19 is dealing with stuff that she should never have to deal with, you know? And um, he broke her down, you know? And I think we all did. By the end, I was slapping Zoka in Atlanta. You know, I had her on her knees, you know? You was about to talk about uh, her, her tooth, tooth, tooth babe. Yeah. Yep. So after there was an incident, you know, where I don't know if it was the same night that she had the threesome with them, but it was around that time where her and Solar got into a, a kind of altercation. I don't know if it was physical or not, but it wouldn't put it past me. I wouldn't put it past me because I don't even know if that's how you say that. I wouldn't I wouldn't doubt it because Okay, I wouldn't put it past him. I'm like, how do you say that? No, it's not uh, really. I wouldn't I wouldn't doubt it because um that was a normal thing in their relationship. Um for somehow, some way he got a hold of her tooth. So the tooth thing. She came and joined us with a false tooth. She got into something type of some type of fight or something. I don't remember what she what the story was, but something happened in her childhood where she got her tooth knocked out. So that tooth that she that's not missed that's there and it's missing. Oh, I'm not saying that right. The tooth that's missing now was always missing from childhood. She came there with a fake tooth. I didn't even know this until one day she doesn't have her tooth in, and I'm like, ah, what's going on? And she's like, no, no, I don't know if. It's, it was that day. I think it was one day she pulled out her tooth for me. Like, she knew how to, like, pull it out and, like, put it back in. I was like, wait, what? And she was like, yeah, it's a big insecurity of mine. And I'm just like, okay. So I guess that during this time that she had a threesome with them and she was having an altercation with Solar, Solar took the tooth and threw it far in Puerto Rico. Like, threw it off the balcony. 
So she was forced to then reveal to the world that she didn't have a tooth there anymore because she no longer had her false tooth. And um, the cold leader kept saying he would take her to the dentist to get another tooth, but he never did. So she was just kind of forced to live with out loud with her security insecurity and she kind of acts like it doesn't bother her but it's her biggest insecurity like she's truly bothered by the fact that she's walking around without that tooth you know that was you know that that that, that meant a lot to her and i think that's why he threw it off the balcony um and so Like I said, she's she's beat up so bad mentally and physically that I don't think she knows where to turn at this point. Um, she, I don't think she views herself as beautiful anymore, um, or as you know the star that she is anymore. She feels like she failed herself um, because when she, she got there, and she she feels like he's a prophet because. When she got there, he told her, don't be with Solar. And she went against him and bit and was with Solar anyways. And she felt like if she would have listened to him in the beginning, she would be a goddess by now. But because she didn't listen to the cult leader and she went with Solar, she felt like she's the one that messed up and not the cult leader. Um, so she blames herself for everything that happened. And it's not her fault, you know, you know, even losing that child wasn't her fault, you know. Um, and I bet it's horrifying to be in that position where people think that you deliberately harmed your child, you know, especially after having the thought of having an abortion, you know. It's like she probably does blame herself because she's like, I didn't, I didn't want the baby to be here, you know, but I didn't want the baby to, to die like that, you know. Um, she thought she was going to meet her baby that day. She thought she was going to have a normal, it was some type of normal relationship with her child that day. Um, but it didn't happen. I remember we picked her up from the hospital, me and Aaron, her and her and Courtney. And uh, uh, Dalen was there too. Oh, he was. Yeah, because me and Dalen, me and Dalen, was, oh yeah, you couldn't. You, know, you was battle buddies. Yeah, so he had to go with me because I guess they dropped. Then they then the cult leader dropped Jayon and so and Courtney off at the hospital. Yeah, at the hospital. We had to go get them. Yeah. Yeah, we had to hospital. go get them. Mm -hmm. We had to go get them. They were dropped off, and then I think we came and got them the next day. Mm -hmm. And um, and then when I think if it was really real because the cult leader had told us that the baby had died in the hospital. But it became really real when she walked out without the baby. She walked out the hospital without the baby, and they got in the car. Yeah, because we didn't. Because I didn't. I didn't understand. Like, I'm thinking, like, what? A, yeah. Did he, like, did he tell us the baby died before we went there? Because I, I can't think even he. Remember. I think they called him, and I think he. I believe he did tell us because I wasn't totally shocked. I think he did tell us that the baby died and he was kind of like a I told you so type of thing. Like, hmm. you know. I can't even really remember. Yeah, it was it was kind of blurry that day. I just remember, I literally am picturing her and Solar walking out the hospital because I remember that moment and she had like the black hoodie on and she was like all cuddled up, like, you know, huddled over, like, you right. know, like obviously sad and she got in the car and didn't even speak to me. Like, she was just like, totally just curled up in the car and she was texting i remember she was like texting solar back and forth like she had so many deep feelings <laughs> you know jayon's a very deep person um and she has so many deep feelings and she was just writing about him and writing about him and sending him messages back and forth and they were like he had his arm around her they were close in that moment they were all each other right. had i mean right. they were the only ones that experienced that you know we right. were not there Right. They experienced that together. Just like me and Aaron experienced the birth of our child together. No one else was there. So it's a it's different, you know, for them than it is for us. Um, but I just remember, you know, she didn't talk. She didn't open up about it. Um I didn't expect her to. And shortly 
after she was forced to get on that on that live i think it was like a month for it was like about three four weeks after it she was forced to get on that live uh, huh? i said it wasn't that long because the only no. reason she, the only reason she was forced to get on that live was because the cult leader was trying to discredit the statements of people saying he killed the baby so he he didn't yeah. he doesn't care about jayon and her no. feelings at all no and that's what i got from sure, that video huh i said and that's what i got from that video when i watched I, it yesterday i realized he did not care about her it was all about tell him what happened right i i gotta go back and watch some of these like pivotal moments in people's journey because as I'm going with you in my mind, as you're talking about it, I'm realizing how far removed I am from these people's experiences because I've associated emotions with these things that only low vibrational, weak people dive into and that mm -hmm. I can, I can, oh, my emotions just can be disregarded because of how I'm thinking, but I'm realizing that the amount amount of unprocessed trauma <laughs> that yeah. people are carrying yeah and that's, that's why i told you they're, they're not healed there's no way there's no way there's no My way they're not thinking man. about there's no way they don't not me only saying they're not thinking about because they might not be thinking about it but their body still feels it it don't go nowhere yeah it's not it hasn't gone anywhere and i was gonna be like oh i'll just wait till they tell their story but i see people that are thinking like oh something bad like happened like you know some type of sacrifice and stuff but it was really just like real life stuff happened and we were forced to downplay it you know but it was real life stuff that a 19 20 21 year old should never have to experience oh, ever no. ever no. no one should have to experience but i mean dang she was a baby and there's certain things like I like I said I don't know if you heard me but you had a uh, you had us on mute I think you might have stepped away but I was saying that it's very important that everybody shares their piece of the story because we're all connected in some type of way so one thing that brought me back to a moment that I completely forgot about when you was talking about Jayon only being there for three months and getting yep. pregnant I remember before she came there uh, me the cult leader Courtney and I can't remember the other guys that was there but we was looking at pictures of her like exposing herself yeah like she was lit and it was supposed to be her just for you know how, you know how yep. chick, you know how send her, her, dude send her, her yeah. dude a nude. yeah everybody up in there Everybody's, looking at it and the cult sorry, leader i saw it and the cult leader is like trying to tell so like oh my god she's so she's so attractive so like i don't i, I, yeah, I don't he was like i don't know so i don't know so i'm gonna have to get her basically i'm gonna have, to, have, gonna have mm -hmm. to get her and i'm like yeah he told her he said sorry she gonna be she he was like you better i don't yeah. know what you gonna do basically telling him that's that you might think that's gonna be yours but that's gonna be mine and you know what but i feel like i'm re revisiting these moments for the first time because i'm realizing mm -hmm. how absent these feelings were well you it wasn't really there like that's the thing we disassociated so many times mm. we, we just we just went numb and just and i don't and i realized that people who haven't been in a situation where they had to go numb won't understand why we did the things that we did if you've ever been in a yeah. position where you had to go numb to deal with a situation then you yeah. can connect to what we're talking about but if you haven't then you'll just think that we're we're bad people or that you know we're crazy or how could y'all not see this or do this but for those of you that have been numb before you understand how somebody can bypass such tragic and traumatic things and i think going numb like I, i'm not a not a psychologist but i think that going numb is actually a survival response if, yeah for sure i mean that's what um the children do it when they're abused in their home you know, it it just it's a it's normal for a a person, a victim of abuse to uh like check out, just just check out and go somewhere else that is better, you know, in their mind for a second. And so there's a lot of things like for instance, um when we recently watched um the the whole like Tanisha 
Misha Saga thing, and um, oh. and uh, uh, we didn't realize how skinny she was. We didn't even remember her being that skinny. Um, I remember Kite. I don't know if he's still going by Kite, but I think oh, his name is Denedric. Denedric. Yeah, yeah. Denedric. Denedric did a video talking about how one day he had told Tanisha to get on her face, and he kicked her in the stomach. Literally, that. I did not know what he was talking about. I thought he was like in a room with them alone. I didn't that, know what he was talking so about I, until I yeah. last week. I was like, uh, I was like, wait a minute. I remember that moment. Like I, I remember I was there and I, I didn't, it was like last week. I remembered that I was actually there when I, I heard him say it. Cause I always heard people say, well, Nedrick said he, she got kicked in the stomach. And I'm like, well, if that's true, I don't know. Cause I didn't see it, you know? Um, right. But uh, I actually did because I remember it um, last week. I remembered. Um, I remember exactly what she was wearing. She had like she has like this long beige cardigan. She had that on, and he told her to get on her face. Were we in the living room? Yeah, we were in the living room. Yeah, and we were all. I think we were. I don't know if we were standing or kneeling. We might have been kneeling. She was told to kneel. She was told to get on her face, but then she like did it in a way that was kind of like a yoga pose and he told her no you know what i mean stop being stupid you know you being stupid you trying to be you trying to show your butt to these men you better get on your you better get flat when you're on your face you know and that's when she did and he got upset because he felt like she was trying to show off and he kicked her in the stomach and i do remember that and it was like i did it's like i i must have checked out because i did it's like like it just came back to me last week i just didn't remember like when he, when i heard him say it again and i heard denedric actually say what happened i was like oh, i was there too like because i for all this time i thought he just saw this moment and i wasn't in the room or something but we a lot of us were there a lot of us were there for sure and i, I think we all looked at it like how he looked at it in that moment like she better get it together because this man ain't playing with her, you know. She needs to. She better obey this man, her husband. Um, but no, she was being abused. She was humiliated the worst, I think, out of anybody I had ever seen there. Like she was humiliated, yeah. degraded, and treated the absolute worst. Yeah, I would say. I would say that too. I was thinking. I was trying to re connect to some things that I may have seen with Velvet. Um but I'm it's kind it was Velvet I don't know Velvet, man. The, the thing with Velvet is Velvet fought, fought back. Velvet more. fought back. That's the yeah, that's so, what makes that's what yeah yeah Velvet So it back. almost was like oh do they just have this tumultuous relationship where they like fighting each other? But um that day on fourth of July, that night of fourth of July, um he stripped her i remember he stripped her of her clothes got her on the ground she, like in some type of like headlock or something i just can't it was i just I can't, can't remember, remember what can't he remember. was actually doing but i remember us standing all, all around her like not not close but we made yeah. a circle That's and a circle. we weren't close to each other but it was like it was it like was Enough, we were protecting him like a wall yeah it was enough to stop her if you tried to run yeah that too she couldn't go anywhere um men and women were around in an open and field it was an open field we were all there like we had our we had our blankets we were eating chinese food like it was a like a regular night not a regular night but like a night we wanted to like celebrate it was supposed to be and a, just drink yeah, he was drinking um and it just like happened so fast. I don't know what he, what he thought if she was being disrespectful. He thought, I don't know. It was just like it happened so fast. He got her in a headlock on the ground. And then she was wearing like this really pretty like dress or like skirt thing. And I remember he just like stripped her and she was left in her bra and her underwear. And she had to stand up in front of all of us in her bra and underwear in shame. And he told the guys, Y'all always looking at her. What are you looking at her for? Turn around. I remember that moment. He told all the guys to turn around and face the other way when she was in her bra underwear. And I don't remember what else was said. 
I remember Sybil was there because she was kind of like, you know, Sybil was always like in panic mode, like what's going on? While I feel like some of us had seen and heard so much that we were kind of like removed. Um, so yeah. But I said in the interview, I had already convinced myself in my mind, like, Velvet was always giving him a hard time. <laughs> right. That's what we that's it's what we foolish. that's what we put that's what we used to justify mm -hmm. her abuse. Is yeah. that you need to stop mm -hmm. giving the cult leader such a hard time and that's why we excuse every yeah. abusive incident that pertained to Velvet. Yeah. But she was just like not having it. Like she wasn't she was little, like she was um more rebellious than a lot of a lot of others and she just wasn't having it <laughs> she's like no you're not about to just keep doing this stuff to me i'm gonna bite you i'm gonna bite you back i'm gonna i'm gonna hit you she, she hit him in the, like, she threw a plate at his head you know and he he got online and said i hit myself working you know it was so funny like he didn't even want to admit that she really got him you know um he, she she was getting him back Sometimes I feel like she would come back just to get him back, you know, but right. you, you know, I don't know. I don't know. It's, you know, Velvet's really hard. You know, she's she's one way one day, another way. I don't know. But um, he, you know, he's like that too. I, at one point, I just thought they like it. <laughs> they, they like, because he would say things like they get physical with each other you know aggressively and then they get physical sexually they like it and i just thought oh okay said, that's what they I accept, like i accepted it i accepted and I accepted it yeah and um no nah, bro she didn't want to and one thing i really do know she did not want to have sexual relations intimacies with other women because velvet would always um want pure pure moments with people and so she knew that you know it would always be forced if she were to have a relationship with anybody there because she didn't really like anybody there like that so he when he forced me and her he had forced me to go down on her um you know he had forced us to have you know intimate moments kissing each other and stuff like that we didn't really want that you know and we both I think we kind of bonded on not wanting it, but um, we were so close to each other in a different way, like in a way, like we were friends. So we kind of just accepted it um, and we followed the instructions. And I didn't know that he would, that the videos would get online and stuff like, like he always recorded sometimes. Um, he rarely recorded with me, which I'm, I, I, I'm glad, but um, he always recorded with the other woman. I think that's like another form of manipulation because no one wants to kind of like leave that situation and say like, you know, that they didn't that they didn't really want it, but they was on video camera wanting it. And you know, and plus it's like, it sounds better to say, oh, well, my husband posted us rather than, you know, this guy posted us that I don't really like. You know, it's it it kind of sounds better, you know, but in reality, they didn't all, they didn't say, yeah, let's post ourselves online having sex. You know, they didn't, they didn't no, say they that. Didn't, no, he, no. Um, he, no. he, he does whatever he wants, whenever he wants. And, and he's allowed to in his, in his logic. So, you know, um, if we, if we were, if we had our tops off in a video, it's because he told us, take your tops off for sure. Um, and oh i forgot oh oh they got him because they got all the camera footage oh it's a wrap <laughs> it's a wrap i forgot they have all of our phones and all the camera footage they have all the cameras oh it's a wrap it's a wrap because the things there's some things that we weren't even recording on live because we people didn't have clothes on so i mean it, it's a wrap they got the cameras but yeah yeah 
And it's so funny to me how we sat there, how I know I sat there and acted like we had so many kumbaya moments and moments where, and, you know, we would get online and say, we have so much fun. We go to all these beautiful places. People are just mad because they didn't get their way. We do all these fun things. We're a family. He takes care of us. Da, da, da. I don't care how much money you spend on me. It does not justify you being abusive. That's what that was for. That's what that's what the the extravagant trips and the what 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 is often referred to as love bombing is used in a way to kind of psychologically balance the abuse. I'm gonna abuse you really bad, but then I'm gonna treat you really good, which kind of puts you in this balanced state of not re not really knowing am I a bad person or am I a good person, and do I. Yep. And, and do and it, it makes you feel like oh i have to go through this abuse because look at how beautiful the abuse look at the beautiful results that the abuse leads to and then it causes mm -hmm. people to associate good treatment with a requirement of abuse but the yeah. real nature of good treatment is something that every human being deserves and it doesn't have to be accompanied with the corresponding equivalent abuse <laughs> you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. It's crazy. Yeah. We really thought that we had this we had to struggle, we had to suffer, we had mm -hmm. to neglect ourselves, deplete ourselves, and then that's how you get a reward. That's how you get to heaven. That's how you get to heaven. <laughs> you you gotta go get through to hell. heaven. You have, you have to no, you didn't come here. I, I'm I'm having a good time. Don't look at me. Right. I'm doing and eating whatever I want to do, but you you don't get to do this. You didn't come here for that. You came yeah. here to suffer. Right. You and didn't come here to be happy. Suffering. You, always and, say. you and, didn't come here to be happy. The, and in the end, mm -hmm. which is not an identifiable destination, in the end, mm -hmm. you're going to get everything. But don't pay attention to me desperately trying to get everything right now. Kind of sounds like the same white supremacy we were so-called preaching yeah. against. Yeah. yeah. The so-called yeah slave master that we was preaching against and they yeah. say that they say that the devil typically finds his ability to be powerful by hiding in plain sight it, I think it was so unbelievable to us that this person could be that bad like I it was, yeah. it was so bad it was unbelievable. Mm -hmm. Like this, he gotta be playing. Like he gotta be playing. Yeah, like, no, I, this gotta gonna, be a I, part I, I of the think, show. I thought it was. No, some things I thought were a joke, like the whole pimp and hoe thing. I thought that was part of the show. Oh, he I playing. He, he playing. I thought he, he playing. was playing. Like he no, playing. I thought he was playing. And sometimes he was actually like a funny person. So I thought like, oh, he's being joke. funny. Okay, yeah. Yeah. No, bro. This man is twisted. And um. Uh yeah, man. He still he still make I bet he's still making them same jokes and things and they laughing. Uh -huh. <laughs> you know, but it is not a game. It's not bro. a game. I yeah. know. Yeah. But I mean, you know, I know a lot of people talk about like you know, well we talk about everything. I see that a lot. We talk about everything and it's like I don't I don't even know everything at this point. Like there's still things that come to me every day that I'm addressing um because you know there was so many things that got tucked tucked away. You know, we don't talk about those things or when we do talk about it we had what we would always say for so long i didn't speak about what happened on july 4th i just said things like i didn't see anything you know i said things like if he ever abused somebody i didn't see, I didn't see it yeah i straight out i just flat out lied uh, because um, i couldn't even come up with a believable yeah. story fast yeah. enough so I, right. I, I and i became a master at deflect yeah when i yeah. know an answer deflect yeah if i if, yeah. if, if, if uh, the if the scripted answer if i didn't have a scripted answer deflect just deflect. Yeah. when in doubt deflect 
And I definitely wasn't even aware of my own abuse. Like, I wasn't aware of being coerced, you know. Uh, in my mind, it was like, you know, even though I said no to him, you know, it was like I was his property. So, uh, you know, he'd always say, you belong to me, your soul belongs to me. And so he, he could kind of, it's like, he could just walk in a room any night he choose. And if you're sleeping in there, he can wake you up and say, come on. You know, that was just like rule. Like it was just like, he could do whatever he wanted to do. If you're in the bathroom, just minding your business, he can walk in there and do whatever he wants to do. It was like, you know, and you try to convince yourself that you enjoyed it, but it's very unnatural. It's very un, it's very disconnected. It's like, no way. <laughs> no way this could be that bad like like no way this person could be that evil that you know they just like get what they want from you and they just like done with you and throw you away like like that and not saying that like you know like somebody like Tanisha is in a better position because because I know a lot of people think like oh the victim is mad because Tanisha was in a better position position she got more attention she um had more intimate moments and maybe people would say that about other women as well including myself like oh you guys are just mad because you guys wanted him and he didn't want you <laughs> like <laughs> it was just like no trust me i i don't want to be tanisha you know because if you have to beat me every day to do the things. It's like, no, I don't. I, I don't want to be in her position. I don't think anybody does. Um, I think that um, the amount of attention she got, like for example, she was given the right to basically command anybody or to say I want Chinese food and somebody can go get it you know somebody can immediately go get it for her likely me yeah <laughs> she was in that position where I guess of that that power and maybe people like Porsche you know who wanted that and stuff like or she gets more of his attention and maybe there's women that are still there to this day that want his attention maybe they're more in competition with somebody like tanisha but once you realize that what is happening is not love that it's truly abuse no one wants that <laughs> like no one wants to be in that position she's actually in the worst position out of all of them because the other ones get get neglected more so they kind of like for example Porsche gets neglected so much that she will try to do something wrong so that she maybe can get slapped you know um it, it's like it's to the point where now they've associated a healthy relationship or one that is passionate with one where you might get smacked up from time to time he's convinced them that women like that I remember me coming in as a virgin like I just didn't really know a lot about sex or what I liked and disliked um, but I remember him often saying that like women like like it rough they like to almost feel like they're being assaulted like they like that type of game he would say that he actually was hired as an escort or a gigolo to chase women around and act like he was a predator to mm -hmm. then have sex with them so he felt like that type of woman was every woman and every woman really wanted to be choked up and yoked up and kind of abused a little bit I thought that maybe that could be true um, so I played into that sometimes but I don't like, 
like that. <laughs> oh, I'm not nobody. Don't put your hands on me. I don't like that. Uh uh. Um, I don't think any woman really likes that. I think that it becomes something that you can get accustomed to. Yeah, I think that it becomes something you can get used to. And you could think that it's love because the person says, oh, baby, but I love you so much. That's why I had to hit you because you just make me so mad sometimes. And I can't let you make me mad because if you make me mad, then I'm not going to be a good man for you. And you know I got to be a good man for you because I love you so much. You know, so you think and you start associating love with that physical abuse. But don't nobody want to be Tanisha for real, for and real. Of course, and of course, an abuser would have to convince himself that the women like the abuse in order to do it yeah so he yeah he gets that. hard by whipping tanisha he gets hard like he gets a rise out of it he loves taking the belt and whipping her he loves it it absolutely excites him and, and I don't even know, bro. Like that, still to this day, just it, it, it it's like what? You no, know, I just remember hugging her with all those webs on her back and just crying with her. I cried with her. I told her she was strong. Because in her mind, she took those whips for all of us, for every black woman. That's what she did in her mind. And Tanisha, Tanisha is very strong, but she don't deserve that. Bro. She's a sweet person, for real, for real. All, all of them are. Yeah. That's why. That's why I want to. I was paying attention to the comments as well. Um, I want to remind everybody to please don't take your anger for the cult leader yeah. and apply it to the women that are there because they are innocent. You have to understand that these women are fr are afraid. Yeah. They're in a damaged state. The things that they're saying, they're not saying it from a place of health and well-being. Please refrain from calling them names. Even, even Courtney and Velvet, please refrain from making them as bad as the cult leader because everybody is trying to deal with what they experience with the cult leader because as much as the cult leader likes to play the victim, he promoted what he was doing in a particular way in an attempt to lure people in only to reveal his true character at a point where people felt like they had done too much. If people mm -hmm. really understood what they were getting into, they would have never came because contrary to popular belief, people don't join cults. They join groups that they feel like are in alignment with their values and their life purpose. It is not Tanisha's fault. It is not Porsche's fault. It is not Jayon's fault, Taylor's fault, Courtney's fault, anybody's fault. What you're watching is people who are in a sick state of mind mm -hmm. because they've been dealing with a sick man. And once you remove the sick man, I guarantee those women will heal. But they haven't allowed themselves a space to heal because they're still connected to the sickness. Sounds similar to what we was promoting. <laughs> you can't heal the <laughs> environment that made you sick, yep. and that's carbonation. Yeah. Can you? And so not please, there. please, please do not take that, all of that energy and that anger and that hurt that you got, that rage, apply it to the cult leader because he's the common denominator to all of this. Yeah, it's funny because like I was talking about that earlier when you, when we were, we were always so angry, you know, and um, I see that a lot in the, in the present, you know, members like. They're just so angry, you know, at the at the people, you know, victim bashing, saying that the victim is not really acting like a victim, you know, and just like just just saying everything they can say is like they're so mad at everybody else, you know, they're mad at the system, they're mad and mad and mad. And I'm just like, 
what's really behind all that? You know, that's not what your anger is really towards. And that's why it, it sounds really forced. It sounds really forced because, and it sounds almost like you're not, you're not hard. You're not a gangster. Like, why are you bucking up at the camera like this? And it's, it doesn't sound real coming from them because that's not who they are. It's not. You know, um, not. they believe that taking on his spirit is honorable and righteous. So they they do this whole like hood dude thing where they, right. you know, put their lips to the side and start talking like they got street knowledge yeah. um but yeah. all these people come from great homes yeah. <laughs> they, they, they come from great homes where their people love on them and kiss on them you know um and they just probably forgot about that but you know it's crazy uh because hey i see them now and i'm like that's not even who you are because like i i've talked to you behind the scenes and like you're not even like that you know yeah. And a lot of anger, I realized, like, Tanisha always had a lot of anger, though. She did. Um, you know, that's why she would rage down the street and she would run. Like, she ran out the house butt naked. You know, she's she's angry. But he's convinced her that she's really angry with herself or with the white man or, you know, somebody else. But she's really angry with him. You know, she doesn't like what has been done to her at all. Like, she never had an inability to speak before she got there. She That's never had the that. Part. That's you the craziest part. That's the craziest part. She was, she was, uh, she always was looked pretty healthy, you know, before she got there. I don't think she ever had any health issues. Um, he literally almost killed her, you know. And pe people don't know that we're reviewing videos from years ago and mm -hmm. just now looking at them and perceiving them from the correct angle mm -hmm. because we were under the impression because we trusted the cult leaders narrative so much we were under the impression that tanisha didn't have nobody she grew up we yeah. were thinking that oh she came from the slums of new orleans and her family's just these bums that don't care about her yeah well, later we watched an interview of her is it was it her sisters or her aunt? it was her sister there's talking, I believe, about her in the hospital and stuff. Yeah, her sisters were talking on Bigo. So, so we're listening to her sisters speak on Bigo, and they're and, and prior to the T showing that clip of her sisters talking, she shows a clip of the cult leader saying that her sisters are demons and that they don't care about her. But then she goes into the segment of Tanisha's sisters talking, and they're not, not ratchet. They're well spoken. And they're showing legitimate concern about Tanisha. They're saying things that the cult leader failed to mention about Tanisha's current state, or, or her, excuse me, her state at the time. Her health was something that any family member would be concerned about. It's not something that, if it, they didn't go on Bego for clout. They didn't go on Bego for attention. They went on Bego to share the information that they got from the actual hospital and the actual doctor that was working with Tanisha and told the truth about her current, uh, her health state at the time. And so, so we're looking at these missing pieces and how we were simply perceiving reality solely from what the cult leader was telling us. And it was like, wow, we really been living this huge lie this yeah. whole time yeah he told us that her mom was a crackhead he even tells it said it to her your mom is a crackhead if you left here you would end up just like her on drugs in the, or in a crazy house he tells her all the time you, you would end up a bum um if you left me the only reason why you was something is because you with me if you left me you end up just like your mama which her mom died when right. she was a baby and stuff so she really, know, believes, he, she, he, really she believes. really believes that because she believes in these generational you know things that happen where you end up just like your parents you know so she believes like if she goes back with her family she's going to end up like her mom and you know um kayla believes that kayla he's convinced kayla that um 
had she stayed in with her family and in quote unquote Babylon, she would have already been a mother of multiple children, possibly by different baby dads, because, you know, she gets pregnant easy and, you know, she, she, she's fast. So she would have just got around and she would have been this little, you know, this little baby mama basically. And, you know, he all, you know, he's like, oh, you know, you, Aya, you would just be a bum, you know? So he says things like that to, you know, he said it to me, like, oh, you would just go back to living a regular life, working at the shoe store. You know, you ain't nothing, you know. So he he basically will get in your head about if you do leave him, you'll you won't be nobody. Right. Or you'll be somebody that is, you know, remember for your poor decisions or, you know, just basically making you think that well, being here, I'm I'm going to be on a pedestal. You know, I'm going to be somebody that people look up to and I'm going to be doing something. I'm going to be standing for something. So better I be here than, you know, go be what he I, says I, I'm going to be. Right, 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 yeah. right. It's basically, See? it's the self-condemnation based upon somebody's prophecy of what's going to happen. Yeah, yeah. And then he'll use, and he uses Velvet because he was like, he told Velvet, or he told us, like, when Velvet leaves, watch, she go end up getting pregnant again. And then it happened. So he, he turned to us and he was like, see, y'all, I be telling y'all I be right. You see, she got pregnant by another dude. Look, y'all, I told y'all. So when we started, like, being like, oh, this dude might be right. You know, so it's like, you know, he prophesied. He'd be like, oh, such and such gonna leave and they gonna end up like this. And then when you see him and you're like, oh, they kind of did, then you try you kind of start to believe him and i think even people that weren't necessarily in the cult but were watching online was believing a lot of the stuff he was saying too because he just he's sometimes he's very convincing and sometimes the things he says turns out to be right you like how that happened you know but um i think he just be throwing stuff out there and sometimes getting lucky i don't think he's no prophet or nothing like that you know he just he just talks a lot <laughs> when you talk a lot sometimes what you say turn out to be true sometimes it don't you know but you know for the most part i think he just he uses what he's saying to manipulate others for sure into being what he wants them to be for him you know he don't really care and that's the thing he don't really care about the health of tanisha because when tanisha was on her deathbed he made it a point to brag about him sleeping with her in the hospital like he got into bed and he he brags he bragged about it to all of us saying Tanisha was so skinny and yeah I made love to her in the hospital and she was all she just she was all skin and bones like yeah I just yeah and it's like you if you love somebody you would never do that you know he doesn't love nobody nobody because when you think about it, like people that love somebody like they're not thinking about that when you in that state you know when 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 you love somebody you know i'm here right right i'm i'm not over there with them but he calls me from jail talk about what you doing you just eating sitting around and i'm like you don't even know if i got a house or a pot to piss in you know it's like the things he thinks about you know whether or not he really cares about you but he doesn't he doesn't 